A new bill now being considered by the Victorian Parliament will give authorities the power to detain drug addicts and alcoholics and force them to undergo detox programs. Some agencies are concerned this type of forced withdrawal will become an acceptable form of treatment. The state government says the bill is designed only to apply to a handful of the most extreme cases. Cheryl Hall reports. So this patient called me up about three weeks ago to have a procedure which I did on her about seven years ago, February 2003. At that time she had a rapid opiate detox and implant because she had a heroin addiction and now she's got caught up again and so she asked me and I haven't done one for six years so I looked around to see what was available for her and um, that wasn't available in, in, in Melbourne so I offered to do one at, at home for her. Dr Simon Rose has worked with drug and alcohol patients in Melbourne for years. He's an advocate of a controversial rapid detox method, but he says whatever treatment is used, the patient must want to stop using. So today, what's happening is uh, she's coming off around $200 a day of heroin and a small dose of methadone. Um, she hasn't taken much methadone over the last few weeks because she's replaced that with heroin. She's in a situation where she needs to have have this detox. Okay, I'm just going to do a little uh, incision so I can put the implant in. This is quite, quite difficult. While this patient has volunteered for treatment, a bill now before State Parliament, the Severe Substance Treatment Bill, will allow authorities to force some drug addicts and alcoholics to undergo withdrawal. A warrant can be obtained to enter their home. They can be restrained and taken to a medical practitioner once they're in the treatment facility, they don't have a right to refuse treatment. If they leave the facility, they can also be restrained and sedated to be brought back into the facility. So what you're looking at is a sort of situation where there can be quite a lot of, for want of a better word, violence that a person's experiencing. The Fitzroy Legal Service says the bill contravenes human rights and could target more than the handful of severe cases that it's intended for. The old legislation was so archaic that it was rarely taken up. The new Act, while it introduced a lot of safeguards, we have a lot of concerns that will sort of reinvigorate involuntary detention as an appropriate way of treating people with drug and alcohol dependence. What I'm doing is I'm creating a space under her skin in her fat. The power to force an alcoholic or drug addict into involuntary treatment has existed in Victoria since 1968. The current bill introduces new safeguards and is supported by the sector's peak body, the Victorian Alcohol and Drug Association. It does help if you go into a treatment regime if you're uh, voluntary, but that doesn't guarantee a successful outcome either. Um, addiction is a chronic relapsing condition. You may have more than one attempt at it. This legislation in many ways has a range of thresholds. It addresses quite significantly a range of human rights issues. It's got protections built in, it's got oversight by the Office of the Public Advocate, it's got support that can be provided by an assist, uh, a support person to the individual. It's not a 50s or 60s or 70s piece of legislation. Now, Trexone is a chemical that binds onto the opiate receptor sites at 100 times the strength of, uh, of, of heroin. If she decides to use heroin again, the, the receptors will basically be coated and hidden to the opiates, and so the opiates will have no effect on it. Dr Rose has used rapid detox on more than 2,000 patients, but he says many were coerced into treatment by family and friends, and it didn't work. Before you do this procedure, it's really important to do an assessment of lots of things, uh, amount of heroin usage, uh, what the underlying psychological problems are, uh, what her supports are, what programs she might be doing afterwards, etc., so that you can maximise the chance that a person will succeed and that you choose um, the right person to do it on. The Alcohol and Drug Association accepts that there could be an increase in applications mm. when the bill is first enacted. Currently there is a lot of discussion, well, is this bill meant for parents who are concerned about their children's uh, addictions? But really our analysis of it is that it's for those that are severely uh, substance affected uh, the intoxication has been persistent and uh, people are in, the, uh, in a very precarious health situation uh, and possibly would die within days. The Fitzroy Legal Service says any adult can lodge an application. They could be doing more harm than good. 
I think that the impetus to try to control people who are engaging in behaviours that are dangerous is very natural. Um, but at the same time, there's not really an evidence base to suggest that that would actually assist people, both in terms of their long-term health and in terms of immediate harm minimisation outcome. This is a return to an old model through a new act. What we have here is a Narcan that will rapidly wash the heroin out of her system. She won't go into catastrophic acute withdrawal because of the other medications that I've given her. How are you feeling there? She'll wake up soon. Dr Simon Rose is convinced involuntary treatment not only won't work, it will cost far more. You have to have a policeman, a doctor, a judge, uh, people to transport them to and from. Then they're assessed by the medical officer at the treatment facility and then they're incarcerated for 14 days. Uh, I think that that whole procedure will cost between five and ten thousand uh, dollars and um, w what I've done here can be done for two hundred dollars and have a much greater chance of success. But the Victorian Drug and Alcohol Association or VADA maintains the legislation is vital. While they may have a right to get themselves in that situation what is the fundamental issue that a civilised society should be dealing with? Should we be seeking to assist and help or just watch and do nothing? And that's the conundrum. VADA is concerned about putting more strain on a system that already can't cope. Even a voluntary patient has to wait weeks or months for treatment. And it says treatment facilities aren't equipped to hold people against their will. They're generally not set up to take involuntary clients. So if they're, if they're going in there, people have the ability to just walk out. People walk out back onto the street into a strange environment, not in a, in a good state. Uh, they create a danger to themselves and possibly others in the community. And we're extremely concerned that the, the facility um, assess the level of security that's required for these sorts of clients. As for Dr Rose's patient... A few days later, I'm feeling... I guess pretty damn good, considering, you know, it was only a few days ago, and I'm really pleased that with myself that I'm off it. VADA and um, other drug and alcohol agencies say that um, this ability is vital to save some lives. I'd be interested to see how many lives it saves. Who do you think will be trying to use this bill? I think pretty uninformed people, you know, scared people. It's not going to work if it's not voluntary. It's not going to work at all because, you know, in the past I've tried to do it for a partner that wanted me off it when I didn't really want to be. And as much as I love the guy, it didn't work. You know, I know I'd break my parents' heart too, but I can't do it for them either. The only person that can make you detox is yourself. It's, you can't do it for someone else. Cheryl Hall with that report.